Listen to the 48 Hours podcast for shocking murder cases and compelling real life dramas from one of television's most watched true crime shows. Go behind the scenes of each episode with award winning CBS News correspondents and producers in Post Mortem, a weekly deep dive. Listen to 48 Hours wherever you get your podcasts. Spinner. Welcome to Notebook, a quick guide to art, culture and tourism in Tokyo. My name is Stuart Monroe and every day around this time from Monday to Friday, I'll be bringing news and views from around Japan. And as the prospect of travel draws ever closer, I also note changes in travel as and when they happen. So it makes sense that we start things off by looking very quickly at entry into the country with the latest border news. As of June the 1st, business travellers, technical interns and some forest students are finally being allowed entry into the country. And as of June 10th, managed tour groups who are triple vaccinated would also be permitted entrance. However, the government's position on resuming normal tourism remains unchanged and a sign it's moving towards a more open border, it's now adopted the approach of other G7 countries, a traffic-like system for Japanese passport holders, foreign residents, and now carefully managed tour groups to enter. Red countries require a three-day hotel quarantine plus a negative PCR test, while yellow countries require three or seven day self-quarantine at home. Finally, blue countries simply require a three-day self-quarantine at home and nothing more. Japan has been steadfast in keeping tourists at bay ever since 2020. The US and Europe have effectively returned to normal as China and Korea still wrestle with new outbreaks in rapid succession. The war in Ukraine has also added to the uncertainty, complicating global travel even further. For those resident in Japan who've recently travelled outside the country, re-entry is no less complex. In the end, the situation that's fluid on the surface is still glacial underneath and any news should be treated with a pinch of salt. It must be said it took several hours and several websites, plus much, much more to understand all the detail. Even then, destinations and points of origin seem at times to contradict each other. Also, the fact that you require a smartphone to use an obligatory health app on arrival, well, that's made a gray area even more confusing. So I guess the moral of this story is be prepared, or better still, be overly prepared. Amid all the uncertainty and confusion, music's the one thing offering a glimmer of hope. Bands such as Pavement, Sigaros and Pixies are all scheduled to perform here next spring. In the meantime, Underworld will perform for three nights in July. First at Osaka Zep Bayside, July 4th, and then for two nights at the Tokyo Garden Theatre Ebis, July 6th and 7th, alongside the Japanese group Sakana Action. And with the latest issue of the UK's Wire magazine featuring an interview with avant-garde musician Few, as its cover story, plus an article by Alan Cummings on Japanese punk and some of the most experimental, difficult to source and listen to sound, at least music in this country can agree, it's better being borderless. That said, music still comes with its challenges. Take the UK label 4AD, for example. It releases its retrospective compilation Pleasures and Treasures exclusively through Tower Records in Japan. Out later this month, it's available via Tower's impenetrable website or in person, then at a later date through the label's own site for those further afield. That's all for now. I'll be back tomorrow with more news and views, but until then, you've been listening to Notebook.